On today's episode, we're going to be dealing with ghosts. Ooh, I'm a ghost from beyond the grave. Coming to teach you Photoshop. Yeah. What's up everyone and welcome back to another episode of Pimping Pixels, the only show that will give you the tips, tricks, and treats that you need to become a pro. On today's episode, we'll be celebrating Halloween by showing you guys a few different ghost techniques that you could create inside of Photoshop. A few of those that we'll be taking a look at are how to actually turn your image into a ghost, how you could create a digital type of ghost effect, kind of like from the movie The Ring, and also we'll be showing you how you could create a ghost on a TV screen to make one of those ghost caught on camera type of photos. Now there's a lot of stuff to go over so let's just jump right into it. So I'm going to start off with this creepy image that I got from BigStockPhoto.com. If you want to get it for yourself and follow along, there's a link to it in the description below. However, it's not free, you have to pay a couple bucks for it. Now I'm going to be adding a ghost-like effect to this image, and to do so I'm going to be following the tutorial Ghosting an Image created by Steve Patterson. If you would like to see the full written tutorial, you could find a link to it in the description below. So let's start this effect off by making a copy of our image and pressing Command on Mac, Control on Windows, and the letter J. Next, we will desaturate our image by going to the top menu and selecting Image, Adjustments, and then Desaturate. Now, we're going to make a copy of that desaturated layer the same way we did just before by pressing Command on Mac, Control on Windows, and the letter J. On this copied layer, we're going to add a motion blur to it. So go back up to the top menu and select Filter, Blur, motion blur. Set the blur distance to something really high like 100 pixels and make sure to leave your angle at 0 degrees. On this blurred layer we will now add a layer mask to it by selecting the layer and then by clicking on the add layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel. Doing this will allow us to bring back some of the details that we lost with the motion blur. With the layer mask selected, switch to your brush tool and set your brusher's opacity to something around 10%, and then just start painting black into the areas that you want to have the detail filled back into. For this image, I really want to get those creepy nails looking super sharp, and I also want to get a little bit more clarity back into the face as well. Now because your brush's opacity is set to such a low percentage, you're more than likely going to have to paint over the same area a few times in order to get those details showing up. The next step will be to merge all of these layers together on a brand new layer. To do this, just select your top layer, then while holding down the shift key, select the bottom layer. You will now have all of your layers selected and you can merge them into a new layer by holding command option shift and then pressing the letter E on Mac. And for PC users, you will hold down control alt shift and then press the letter E. Now on this new layer with all the effects applied to it, we're going to add a diffuse glow. Go to the top menu and select filter, filter gallery. You'll see this really big window pop up with a whole bunch of filters that you could apply to your image. For this example though, we're going to be looking for diffuse glow and you can find that underneath the distort panel. Here we're going to set the graininess to 3, the glow amount to 10, and the clear amount to 10 as well, and then just hit the OK button. The last step is to add a solid color to this image. At the bottom of your layers panel, click the new fill adjustment layer button, and at the top of its pop-up, select solid color, and pick a color that you want to add to the image. I suggest going with either green or blue for this ghost effect. Then all you need to do is set the layers blend mode to color and lower its opacity until you're getting just a little hint of color on your image. 
All right, so there you have it. That's really the end of the tutorial as written by Steve Patterson in his written tutorial. Um, what I wanna do is actually add a couple more steps to this to show you how you could create more of a digital type of ghost. Something like from the movie The Ring when that came out like 15 years ago or however old that movie is now. But you know, it was a cool looking effect and cool looking design where you know, you had that ghost coming out of the TV and it's all like TV staticky and digital looking. So let me show you how you could actually create that inside of Photoshop. For this, you're gonna have to download a couple of different freebies. The first is the free seamless TV noise patterns by Wii Graphics, and the second is image 24 of the TV noise images inside of CG textures. I have direct links to them in the description below, and you can also find them on our Pimping Pixels freebie page. After you download the TV noise patterns, just double click on the pattern icon, and it will seem like nothing has happened, but if we go back into Photoshop, they'll actually be installed. We're going to apply one of these patterns to the solid fill color layer that we just made before. So right click on that layer name and select blending options. In here, click pattern overlay and then click the pattern image and scroll down to the very bottom. You should see all of those new patterns added at the end. And in case you don't see them, just take a look at our older episode, Photoshop Extensions, and you'll see how you can manually install the patterns inside of Photoshop. The pattern that we'll be using will be the dark blue one at the very end. And because I have a high res image, I'm gonna bump the scale of this pattern all the way up to 1000%. So right now it looks like it's behind a TV screen and it looks a bit flat. So instead of leaving the effect like this, what I'm gonna do is actually change the blend mode of the pattern to color burn. This will apply that really cool pattern look, but to like all the white edges and it just looks awesome like this. And it gives it a bit more depth. Next, what I'm gonna do is take that TV noise image that we got from CG Textures and simply put it on top of everything, set its blend mode to overlay, and then drop its opacity down to something around like 35, 40%. And there you have it. We now have a digital looking ghost effect. So now that we have this awesome ghost image, wouldn't it be great to scare the crap out of your friends and family with it? Of course it would. So the easy way to do this is to take an image of them while they're at a party or an event and make sure that they're standing around or near a TV. All you need to do is really make sure that there's a screen in the shot. Then inside of Photoshop, take that image and place your ghost image into it. You'll see these little transform handles all around your image. On your Mac, hold down Command while dragging these corners in order to match the corners of your TV screen. On PC, you'll do the same effect by holding down Control. This will match your image to the perspective of the TV. Now once it's all lined up, just hit enter. Next, drop its opacity to a really low percentage, something like one or even 2%. If there is too much going on, like the background of this image, just add a layer mask and paint it all away. For this, we really just wanna have the face and fingers showing, so I'm gonna mask everything else out. Then, just reposition the image wherever you want it to be. Now just send this image over to that person and see if they find it out on their own first. If they don't, it's great. You want them to not suspect anything. Hit them back with that same image a couple days later and then be like, yo man, I don't wanna freak you out or anything, but did you see what was on the TV screen in that image? It's like a face and it's like staring directly at you. And that will probably scare the crap out of them, hopefully. <laughs> Now it's a really cheap trick, but if the person you're doing this to really believes in this type of stuff, then it definitely has the potential to like really freak them out. Now, one major tip to keep in mind when doing this prank is when you take the photo, bump your ISO up to its highest setting because you don't wanna take a really good crystal clear photo. You wanna make your photo as grainy and as bad looking as possible. And doing this will actually make your image more questionable. They won't be able to tell that it's fake right away because the image quality just isn't there. So that'll do it for today's paranormal episode of Pimping Pixels. Make sure to hit that like button and share this video with all of your friends. And in case you have any questions about today's episode or if there's something you want to see done in a future episode, let us know in the comments below. We're here to help you out. That's why we make these videos. So go out there, start creating some ghosts, scare the hell out of your friends and family by adding a ghost onto their TV screens. Keep on pimping them pixels. This episode is all about ghosts. <laughs> so stupid for doing this. What's up everyone and welcome back to another episode of Pimping Pixels. And my hair is in my way.
So that'll do it for today's paranormal episode. Make sure to hit that like button and share this with all of your friends. All of your friends. Make sure to share this with all of your friends. <laughs> I always I always mess up on the closings. The closings probably take me the longest to film. <laughs> Woo! One more. One more. Why don't we just boo on over to it? That's stupid. Why don't we boo on over to it? That makes no sense. I like that one a lot. <laughs>